Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of DGS2 Case 3. The jurors have finally put in their verdicts uh, after like a whole trial day and into this one where they didn't actually do anything up to this point. This is literally our first um, closing argument for this case. Uh, so for this game, and I'm pretty sure it's probably gonna be the only one considering how far into this case we are already. So it's very interesting. It almost feels like it was. It ended up being kind of an afterthought, or they just couldn't fit it in for this trial. Which is a real shame since they like really promoted this mechanic. The jurors claims. I've known her for ages. Her cooperate with a criminal, unthinkable. True. I certainly can't imagine them working together. I don't believe the coroner has anything to do with the wax figure you say that swindler stole. I've been put through the ringer by the police before as well. I can't say I trust them. We don't even know if that wax figure was ever in the cage to begin with. You're just saying what's convenient for you without any proof. I won't let you get away with it. It sounds like... This wax figure is the final sticking point. This wax figure has a bill that's almost the exact opposite of the victim's, and its face isn't even visible. I must admit, I admire your extreme courage for indicating this as the body double. It's true. I'm perfectly aware of how unnatural this wax figure business is. But that's the part. It makes me think it must be a clue. What do you mean, Naruto-sama? I can't really put it into words, but I think there was a reason that this thing had to be used as the body double. A reason that it had to be the wax figure. And there must be a meaning behind whether or not it looked like the victim. In that case, we definitely can't allow the trial to end here. Yeah, you're right. Somehow, we have to push through this. Now then, defense, begin your final appeal. Yes, your honor. Let's go. What do you mean, put through the ringer? Mm, you have a lot of clashes with the police if you're a street performer magician. Is that so? Naturally, we have no stage to perform on, so... We practice our delicate, impressive art in parks and side streets. And the police make up reasons to interfere with us. Hello. <laughs> Everything okay, Otomo-san? Who are you calling a murderous officer? Uh, sorry, I heard that you look like him, so... We look nothing alike. You want to be arrested for disrespecting an officer? Damn you, Holmes-san. Okay, your mistake was actually listening to Holmes. Setting that aside, you clearly seem to have something you want to say. After hearing Juror 3's statement. In my day. In my day. Things weren't like this back in my day. What were they like? We police officers fought tooth and nail to gain the trust of the citizens. And the citizens respected us for it. Respect? Hmm. Suspecting a coroner of all people. The autopsy report performed by the coroner used to be synonymous with police investigation. 
There was no one who didn't know the name Courtney Simon. She's the best coroner there is. She was the star of hope. One moment, please. Um, who is this Courtney Simon person you just mentioned? Huh. Sorry about that. I got a little overexcited for someone my age. Apparently, Simon was Dr. Sif's maiden name. Her maiden name? Her name before she got married, huh? Ah, right, right. These days, her name is... Sith, isn't it? Simon. I feel like I've seen that name somewhere before. Back then, we had a passion for justice blazing in our hearts. Okay, I'm gonna go through this. Oh, uh, the convict, redacted for confidentiality. Pseudonym, the professor. Confirmed dead by hanging by Courtney Simon. Uh, that's June 17th, 12 o'clock a.m.? Uh, well. Okay then. Um, excuse me, number six. Would you mind? Adding that name to your testimony? Uh, sure. Her former name was Courtney Simon. She was a legendary coroner. Alright, we're gonna pit this person with juror number two. There's a clear contradiction between these two claims. Did you say a contradiction? In whose statement? If I may, juror two? C certainly you're always welcome. I believe you heard what juror six just said, correct? Just revealed Dr. Sis made a name. And in doing so, exposed a formerly unseen relationship. Oh my. We women are rather fond of that sort of thing. But, I'm afraid I still don't see any such relationship. Dr. Sith's maiden name was Simon. And that name links Dr. Sith to the wax figure. I have evidence. Hmm, evidence? Oh, goodness. How romantic. The court needs to hear more about this defense. What do you mean? If you would please look at this. This is the evidence that displays the connection between Dr. Sith and the Professor. I have here an autopsy report that was filled out 10 years ago. 10 years ago? Whose is it? Naturally, it's the wax figures. The Professor's. Uh-uh. The Professor? If it's that of the murder, then that must mean... Yes, it's the death certificate that was filled out following his execution. As his identity was never revealed, we still don't know who that serial killer really was, but... The issue here is the name of the coroner who filled out the report. Courtney Simon. <gasps> Courtney Simon? What? Ten years ago, she filled out the professor's autopsy report, and Enoch Drebber went to the trouble of kidnapping his wax figure. With all his options, he went with the professor, who was a completely different build from Dr. from Dr. from Mr. Kingsley. So are you saying that there's some sort of suspicious relationship there? Yes, it certainly seems that way. These two, Coroner Dr. Sith and Enoch Drebber, have some sort of un still unseen connection. And it revolves around the figure known as the Professor. Hmm. Relationship. Connection. Unseen. I'm all a quiver. I would like to watch a little longer and see where your argument is headed.
I agree. We can't allow the trial to end like this. I can't allow any suspicion to remain on the yard's corner. After all, back then we had our passion for justice blazing in our hearts. The point that that swindler and the coroner have in common is the professor. That's a new statement. Alright, we're gonna go talk to Mr. Four now. Do we not know? But didn't you also say that the teleportation was just an illusion? I certainly did. But even so, normally a person would have tricks and secrets set up for such an illusion. Huh? Well, since it were fated to be sent plummeting after an explosion, I see no reason to use a real human. However, even if he decided to use a wax figure, it's only polite to use one that bears some resemblance to the victim. What does politeness have to do with this? In any case, if you're going to make a point of saying that that wax figure was in the cage, then you'll need to present evidence of that. That's the science of law. That's a doctor from the Royal Science Academy for you. That's a very logical point. If you're able to present evidence, it'll likely change the situation. Oh, I can totally present something. Evidence showing that the wax figure was inside the cage, huh? I've got some, I've got nothing. I've got some. Totally. I have something I'd like you to have a look at, number four. Oh ho! My policy is only to believe people who wear lab coats. But I am prepared to listen carefully only out of curiosity of what will come out of the mouth of someone dressed all in black. He doesn't seem to notice that he himself is dressed all in black. The evidence that shows that the wax figure was inside the cage at the time is... Where's that little glass shard that we found? Is this a shard of glass? It's unusually thick, isn't it? This was found inside the clothing of the wax figure. It appears to be a special sort of glass, made to ensure durability. It's possible that it's the same sort of glass that was found scattered all around the Crystal Tower. The Crystal Tower? Oh! That's right! The very Crystal Tower that acts as the symbol for the London's World's Fair. The cage went tumbling down that day and plunged right through that special glass. And you're saying that's how this piece of glass got there? So, what do you think now? I think you'll agree that this is pretty compelling evidence of that possibility. Mm. I normally make it my policy to only believe people in lab coats. But regardless the fact that you are clad in black, that was some outstanding reasoning. Which means I must adjust my position on the matter. In that case, please state your new position. It sounds like there's a high probability that the wax figure was inside the cage. We can deduce that from the shard of glass. Alright, we're gonna pit. Number four with the child. Oh my goodness. There's a clear contradiction between these two claims. A uh, contradiction, you say? In whose statements? Sorry to bother you while you're enjoying that corn on the cob, but may I have a word, you're a five. Ah, uh, are you talking to me? I didn't just make up something convenient without any proof. The wax figure really was in the cage that day. And as I just proved with as I just proved with evidence. What? Really? Are you saying you don't get it? Corn on the cob is about the only thing I really get. You're kidding, right? 
very well defense. Juror four? Since you've logically proven this new possibility, it is my duty to see where this line of reasoning is headed. Me too, then. Huh? This bloke's an important scientist, so whatever he says is probably right. I... I... I'm no match for corn on the cob or important people! <laughs> uh, we got a freebie? <laughs> Yes! Wait, is this really okay? <laughs> just take it, Naro, just accept it! That's enough! As a result of the final appeal, the juror's votes have changed. Two for guilty and four for not guilty. Therefore, the court has not come to a unanimous decision. And the trial must continue. I... I did it. You're amazing, Narahoto-sama! Woo! A serial killer, the professor. So this wax figure was used as the victim's body double. Though the claim is incredibly difficult to believe, it's clearly true. However, it seems we will need to investigate the claim further. The wax figure is the thing that links Doc Mr. Drebber to Dr. Sith. There must be some sort of special significance be behind it. And just what do you claim that is? I'm going to investigate that further. VA evidence and testimony. <sighs> In order to gather more information about that wax figure. We'll need to call its owner as a witness. I its owner? Madame Roussard. Prosecutor Van Zeeks. I was sure he'd raise an objection to this, but... Understood. Let us subpoena Madame Roussard at once. Defense. Yes, sir. Bear this in mind. Right now, you have your fingers on a seal that must never be broken. Uh, just letting you know, it will probably be broken either in this thing or later on. Now then, the court will adjourn for a 45 minute recess. The prosecution will prepare the new witness during that time. Madame Roussard. As you wish. We are continuing. There's going to be a to be continue here, I believe. But we are definitely continuing. We have uh, ten minutes. So we'll probably get through the lobby scene and go right into the next uh, part of the trial. Oh, boy. Professor's thing, man. Same day, 11.53 a.m., the Old Bailey's Defendant's Lobby. Hey, well done in there! Thanks for sticking around to watch, Homesan. Of course I did! I was watching from the gallery on the tender hooks. Our trial's great! For those of us in the gallery, I mean. Um, I'm glad you were enjoying yourself. Well, what the blazes? What on God's green earth? What on God's green earth is going on here? Just who in the world is this professor fellow? I've certainly never heard of him. Oh, I see. I guess... he got already immigrated to Germany ten years ago, huh? Ah! The professor, eh? I had this dreadfully foreboding feeling ever since I first heard he'd been kidnapped, but 
Looks like there's an even uglier group lurking behind this than I thought. I certainly feel for you. Everything about this case seems to be hitting Prosecutor Van Zee's pretty close to home, too. You're likely correct about that. Not only is our client Dirk Porsama a friend of his from the university days, from his university days, but the wax figure that had been dragged into the picture is of the serial killer who killed the older brother he so deeply respected. I'm willing to bet that even Reapy couldn't have imagined you tossed something like that at him. Right. Regardless, what exactly was the professor incident? What do you mean? First it was Drebber Sama, the engineer, then Dr. Sith, and now Lord Van Seeks. I think that everyone in this trial could also have connections to that incident. It's almost as if I'm the only one here who had nothing to do with it. Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, well... I'm relieved by that fact, and yet... I can't help feeling a tad left out. Pardon me. Hi! Dr. Sith! Oh well! What have we here? Dr. Courtney Simon! Mr. Sherlock Holmes, you would show up here, wouldn't you? Would show up here. Whatever do you mean? You were the one who instructed Gregson to receive that ten-year-old autopsy report, were you not? Oh, me? I'm afraid my lips are sealed. Well, Gregson's weren't. He told me. Oh no, Gregson, are you in trouble? It's been ten years already since that incident. I was shut away in the prosecutorium. Armed with naught but a single lancet. And now I feel as though the stench of death and antiseptic from that victim still lingers on my person. I heard a few things about you from the police officer juror earlier. I've indicted you as an accomplice. Fine taking the stand and testifying about the truth. I'm afraid that would be rather difficult. Van Zeeks will not be calling me as a witness in today's trial. Lord Vortex has forbidden it. Why? Lord Vortex? There's a seal that must never be broken, and it's on the Professor incident. Kindly accept that you won't be able to drag me into this. You want a bet? So you're going to flee and hide? How cowardly! I've always fought crime head on. Doing only as I thought was right. And I have no regrets about my conduct. One. I came here to tell you that. And nothing more. Now then, if you'll excuse me. Yeah, sure, that's what you think, but you are on edge. You are on edge, because this boy is totally gonna bring you into the courtroom. Somehow. Seal that must never be broken, huh? I wonder what that could mean. No need to worry. Once the trial reconvenes, you'll find out whether you want to or not. Huh? Well, it looks like the time is near. I'd better be getting back to the gallery. I'm a member of the audience today, after all. I think he's enjoying this a little too much. All right, let me just warn you about one thing. The trial in the trial ahead, there are facts that remain even slightly obscured. You mustn't over your eyes from them. Hunt down the truth and don't stop. No matter what happens in there, make sure you pursue every last detail to the bitter end. I will. Thank you very much. Right then, I'll be off now. I'll be cheering you on while chewing away on this caramel that I just bought. Wonder what the significance behind Holmesan's warning just now is. No matter what happens in there, just 
What does he expect to happen? This next section of the trial is the last hearing this case will ever receive. I have to make sure we uncover the truth. Yeah, no matter what happens in there. Looks like, is the, the game freeze? Same day, 12.40 p.m., the Old Bailey Supreme Court. Now then, in the name of the Queen, court is hereby reconvened. Have the prosecution defense prepared for their cases. The prosecution is ready. The defense is also ready. This trial began with the accident that occurred at the London's World's Fair. Never imagined that it would end up involving a condemned prisoner who was executed 10 years ago. I doubt anyone could have predicted that. Very awkward. Although that seems to be the case for all the cases handled by this attorney. <laughs> now then, the court will proceed to perform verification on the wax figure presented by the defense. Lord Van Zeeks. Your Honor. What are the preparations for Madame Roussard's testimony? They proceeded without a hitch. Madame is currently waiting in the witness lounge. In that case, have the witness enter the court. As you wish. Bailiff, escort Madame Roussard to the witness stand. About to enter the next stage of the trial. Trevor is the killer in this case, then he had an accomplice, and that person was Dr. Seth. The link between the two of them is that wax figure. The wax figure of the serial killer, the professor. It's the only key that links these two. They have nothing else in common. All I can do for now is pursue that small possibility. You can do this, Naruto. We got this. I Probably do the same method to see if I can get up to her, like, starting a testimony. State your name and occupation, witness. Burnett Roussard. I am a wax figure artist. And the proprietor of Madame Roussard's Wax Museum. I'll be opening my next exhibit soon, so please pardon me for continuing to work up on here. Work on up here on the stand. Looks like Homesan's already had a mold made of him. For some reason, I feel a mysterious emotion welling up inside of me. A few days ago, a wax a single wax figure was stolen from your museum. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Personally, I considered it a kidnapping. A kidnapping? Of a wax figure. Yes, because the kidnapper demanded ransom money. But according to what I heard in the lounge earlier, that wasn't the case. Apparently, he stole it to use it as body double for the victim in a murder. That's the defense's claim, in any case. This is the victim in the case at hand, Mr. Conrad Kingsley. Oh. I'm familiar with him. I have a figure of him in my villain's corner. You hardly need more than a single look to see that their bills are totally different. Uh, but... but maybe... Maybe there's a strange resemblance in their faces or something. Are you trying to say that you want to see what the professor's face really looks like? I have the key to his mask right here. Though I've been forbidden to open it. Ridiculous! I beg your pardon? Don't know what the face looks like beneath that mask, but... There's no way it's modeled after the professor's real face! A valid point. A serial killer's identity was never once revealed. The trial was carried out in absolute secrecy. 
in the presence of Her Majesty the Queen. And the murderer was, the execu was then executed. His true identity is a national secret. The idea that a lowly museum owner could have gotten her hands on it is unthinkable. It would seem that you're not familiar with the Rosad family creed. Rosad family creed? The Rosad family always makes molds using the real person to breathe life into our works. The face molds are taken from the people themselves with wax. That's our creed. It's a famous rumor regarding the Rosad family. Apparently, during the French Revolution, your predecessor made a wax figure of the Queen right after she'd been executed at the guillotine. Yes, that was around 100 years ago. It said that a mold was made using the Queen's decapitated head. Yes, it's still on display in the Chamber of Horrors. We'll do anything in order to get a mold made from the actual person. What? Fearsome tenacity! Oh god, I'm reminded how creepy this part of the freaking trial was. The only thing that can breathe life into wax is being cast from a real person. That's the essential point that has been passed down through my family for generations. Then, other than that mask is... Yes, the face was made using a mold taken from the actual professor and has been hidden away. Ludicrous. Impossible! The professor plunged all of England into the depths of terror. Thanks to that, he's still a very popular part of the special exhibit room. By all means, please pay us a visit to see the serial killer rising again from his grave. It appears that we will need to hear this witness's testimony regarding that unsettling wax figure and the involvement of the witness herself. Certainly, Your Honor. And we'll listen to her mysterious and creepy testimony in the next video. So I'll see you guys then.